gauges. They're everywhere, on mechanical scales, in cars, airplane cockpits, and many other places. They're old school and mechanical, and they only show a single value at a time. They're clearly useful in some contexts, but when they're used to show data, especially around elections, people get mad. A related technique that also gets a bad rep are circular bar charts. But they too can be used well in the right context. I believe that they're actually very similar to gauges in how they are best used, and I think both gauges and circular bars are very effective when used the right way. Let's take a look. Gauges are perhaps the oldest way of showing a measurement. They usually consist of a pointer that rotates or pivots, and a scale that provides a way to read off a value. Because the pointer rotates, the scale by necessity has to be an arc, though of course modern gauges can also be linear. But I believe that this circular shape is part of the reason why many people don't like them. There's a certain distaste towards round shapes in visualization. Gauges have some interesting features though. For one, they have a fixed scale. In software, you can of course change a gauge's scale arbitrarily, but you can't do that with a real-world instrument. What that means, though, is that not only can you read off the value that's being shown, but you also get a sense of where you are in the overall range of all possible values. When you look at a car dashboard, for example, the numbers you see tell you something. You're not likely to exceed the top speed you're seeing on this speedometer dial. And the RPM meter gives you even more information on its scale. You're not supposed to spend too much time in the yellow or red zones. And while you can probably exceed the range of RPMs on this instrument if you really try, it's not a good idea. The scale doesn't define absolute limits, but it does show you the range of RPMs or speeds that the car is supposed to be operated within. The fuel gauge is also interesting, because unlike the other two instruments, a fuel gauge doesn't have absolute units like liters or gallons. Instead, it shows you how much fuel you have as a fraction of the total tank capacity, which means that it can't go outside of its range from completely empty to completely full, so it really acts a lot like a pie chart. Which, of course, brings me to circular bar charts. Like gauges, circular bar charts have a poor reputation. They're often considered a bad idea, period, no matter the use case. But I think they can be very useful when used right. Now, of course, circular bar charts have their issues. If you just take a regular bar chart and turn it into circles, you quickly notice them. Patterns that are very easy to read from a regular bar chart can be impossible to figure out with any precision from a circular bar chart. Distributions are entirely impossible to read, especially if they were to be animated. But circular bars work well when they're not treated like a bar chart, but instead work as a sort of part-to-whole chart, like the rings on the Apple Watch, for example. The Apple Watch rings show you how close you are to your goal for walking, exercise, and standing time each day. So they're scaled to show 100% completion for each activity when they're complete. The goal is to close the rings, meaning to get to 100%. And this is the key function of these charts, so they act less like bar charts and instead more like donut or pie charts. Now, unlike a donut chart, you can go beyond 100% on these circular bars. The design is actually really clever with a subtle gradient and a self-shadow so you can see when you've crossed 100%. But it's not super readable and certainly not very precise. It's clearly considered less important how far you got beyond 100% than that you got there in the first place. Some apps don't even bother to show you progress beyond 100% at all. Take this Strava home screen widget, for example. It shows the same 0 to 100% range for weekly mileage, but beyond 100%, it simply shows you a closed ring. If you make it a habit to go well beyond your goal, perhaps you need to update that. Another advantage of rings is that they work well in a small space, like when you don't take up the entire display on your watch, but are just a small complication on a watch face. A regular bar chart would be much harder to read here, not look nearly as good, and not use the given space nearly as well. You actually get quite a bit more resolution from the longer distance around the circle here than you would get from a normal bar chart in the same space. But back to gauges. For the US presidential election in 2016, the New York Times debuted a new way of showing the currency of the vote count and its uncertainty using a gauge. The scale showed how likely the election was going to go to Hillary Clinton on the left or Donald Trump on the right. A pointer, or a needle, showed the currency of the vote count, but it also showed the amount of uncertainty by chittering. This became known as the needle. To say that the response to the needle was negative would be an understatement. I think that there were two reasons for it, only one of which really had anything to do with the needle itself. 
Using jitter or motion to show uncertainty is an established idea that also has some research behind it. In particular, a technique called HOPS, or hypothetical outcome plots, shows the uncertainty in data by presenting many different estimates of the true value. One way to do this is by having a line hop around, similar to the needle moving, with more uncertainty meaning a wider range of values that the line might appear in. Research has shown that this is quite effective, even if not everybody loves watching a line bounce around like that. The other reason why people reacted so badly to the needle, in my opinion, had nothing to do with the needle itself, but rather with the outcome of the election. New York Times readers, and perhaps a lot of the people who would be watching this kind of election coverage, were hoping and assuming that Clinton would win. In fact, I believe that just before the election, the New York Times had pegged Clinton's chances of winning at about 82%. So when the needle started swinging more widely and creeped towards the red end of the scale, people ended up blaming the outcome on the representation of the data. I still think that this is an effective way of showing vote count data and its uncertainty. When there is a lot of uncertainty, the representation should reflect that. It shouldn't give you a false sense of security the way a single number like 82% does. The problem was, of course, that a lot was riding on the outcome of this election. I think this would have been much less problematic if the uncertainty in the forecasts had been stated more clearly from the beginning, rather than hitting people with it for the first time during election night. Or, of course, if the election had gone to Clinton instead. Gauges are still widely used in many places, in particular when it comes to showing real-time readings like speed or similar. That is the case even when they're not even physical instruments anymore, but screens, like in many cars or in modern plane cockpits. Their close relative, the circular bar chart, is also used on millions of devices to show completion data in a compact and attractive way. Clearly, both can be used poorly, and especially circular bar charts quite often are. But I hope that I've shown how effective these techniques can be when used for the right purpose. Thanks for watching, and take care. Music